Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Uh, dear students, today we start a new chapter, chapter number five, grade eleven, liquids. Uh, this is the lecture number forty-two, chapter number five, grade eleven. The new chapter is uh, liquids. So, uh, liquids they have a definite body but indefinite shape. They acquire the shape of any container, but the force of attraction of the liquids are stronger than those of the uh, gases because liquid molecules they are close with each other, and you can see the liquid uh, gases cannot be seen because of the molecules are far apart from each other. So there are uh, three kinds of liquids: ionic liquids, just like mold. We melt the sodium chloride. We melt the aluminum chloride. Molten. In the normal cases, they are not in the uh, liquid state. But if you uh, heat them, they are going to melt. Then we call them okay. Molecular liquids: low boiling point, water, and ethanol, and also carboxylic acid. Uh, metallic liquid: uh, moderate to high boiling point. Mercury. Mercury is natural in the metal, but it's in the liquid state. So ionic liquids, they are going to be high temperature. Uh, they are going to change into liquid form, just like aluminium chloride, uh, high boiling point. As we done in the uh, previous uh, lecture, uh, liquid uh, gas in state, molecular kinetic molecular theory of gases, they have is also we have kinetic molecular interpretation of the liquids. Kinetic molecular interpretation of liquids. So according to kinetic molecular theory of gas, you've done before now. According to kinetic molecular theory of liquids, these are the postulates. Number one: a liquid is made up of molecules which touch uh, one and other. And there are many kinds of liquids. There are uh, uh, some liquids are high uh, boiling point liquids, sulfuric acid, high boiling point liquids. Water is strong, hydrogen bonding, 100 degrees centigrade boiling, alcohol, ethers, they are low boiling liquids. So, but these liquids, the molecules are going to touch with each other. Number two, the molecules within the liquid are in constant motion, but movement of molecules is restricted due to the close packing. So, their movement is restricted because of the molecules between the liquid are strong. As compared the gases molecules. Number C. Attractive forces among the liquid molecules are greater than those of the gases. However, these attractive forces are not sufficient to hold the molecules to the fixed. That's why I told you the definition of the liquids. Liquids have definite volume but indefinite shape. Liquids acquire the shape of any container. So this slide. The liquid molecules can slide each other. They can flow. Number D. The average kinetic energy of liquid molecules is directly proportional to absolute temperature. The same as we done in the for the gas and state. The kinetic energy of the uh, liquid molecules will be increased as we increase the uh, temperature. At a constant temperature, the average kinetic energy molecule is equal to kinetic energy of the vapors of the liquid. So these are the A, B, C, D, E uh, points for the kinetic molecular theory of the liquids. Now properties.
properties of liquids so according to kinetic molecular theory of liquids uh, these uh, liquids can diffuse there is a diffusion as we done in the gases so one liquid can diffuse in other uh, gases so we call diffusion of the gases so now uh, diffusion of the liquids the diffusion in liquids takes place because molecules move from one place to other place as we done in the previous uh, topic the kinetic energy the, the, the is not very high their restriction the movement movement of the liquids are restricted and the diffusion the rate of diffusion is slow as compared to the gases so this is a uh, diffusion of the liquids diffusion the, the example is that you have a glass of water or you have a, a water in the jug or you are putting uh, some few drops of uh, red ink so uh, after very little short time the whole uh, water is going to be red because this there uh, are means uh, kinetic energy in the molecules of liquid and they move and here and there have hazardly that's why uh, the whole water is going to be colored drop of ink when added to water diffuses slowly due to the length of small empty spaces present between the liquid molecules side so it takes time the ink droplets diffuse in water the diffusion between closely packed molecules of liquid is slow due to less collision between them because of these molecules are, are going to be less collide now uh, here students if you see compression compressibility factor
So it is going to be 50% reduction in volume. So you can see the comparison. You can see the comparison of reduction of volume between the liquids and gases. In the liquids, when the pressure in increased from 1 to 2 atmosphere, the reduction is volume in 0.0045%. But in the case of gases, it is going to be reduced volume 50%. So this is the phenomena that we can conclude that very, 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 very small uh, effect of pressure on the liquids. It means that liquids are also not going to be compressed due to the close uh, molecules with each other. Expansion, effect of temperature, yes. Liquids can be expanded. There is an expansion of liquids by heating. So this is an expansion.
space between them, liquid molecules generally, uh, they are less space as compared to gases. Already we have done in the previous uh, these points that every liquid molecule touches with another uh, liquid molecule. The molecules forming a liquid state are fairly close to each other. There is a very little space between them. As a result, number of collision among the molecules are moderate. Therefore, the average kinetic energy is also moderate in between solids and gases. Intermolecular forces. Intermolecular forces, the force of the liquids uh, among them between alcohol and alcohol, between water and water, acetone and acetone, um, ether and ether. So, dear students, all the properties, thermodynamic properties, boiling point, melting point, vapor pressure, surface tension, viscosity, heat of vaporization. All these properties depend upon the intermolecular forces of the liquid. So very simple that if the intermolecular forces are strong, so it means that boiling point of the liquid is very high, melting point is going to be high, surface tension is going to be high. So these thermodynamic properties are going to be high if the uh, force of attraction between the liquid molecules is going to be strong. So if we are going to compare water and uh, uh, acetone, so in the water you know it's a very strong uh, intermolecular force which we call Havilland bonding. So due to this Havilland bonding is highly polar, so its boiling point is very high about 100 degrees Celsius at one atmospheric pressure. A strong intermolecular force. But if you see the acetone, uh, its boiling point is about 56 degrees Celsius. Acetone. 56 degrees Celsius, so it, it means that the intermolecular force between the acetone molecules are weak as compared to the uh, water. So this, uh, these properties, all uh, thermodynamic properties depend upon the intermolecular forces among the liquid molecules. Kinetic energy based upon kinetic molecular theory of gases, as we have done before that, uh, they have a minimum uh, movement of the gas or uh, liquid molecules due to the strong force of attraction. So minimum movement is uh, uh, with collisions between them. So water molecules are closer with each other. Strong intermolecular forces due to the Havilland bonding. So it has a low uh, kinetic energy. So students, these are the uh, properties of liquids. These are the simple chapters. Still, we are doing simple chapters. Uh, again, uh, we are talking 
about the same point intermolecular forces point number 6 that the all uh, thermodynamic properties of the uh, liquids depend upon the intermolecular forces so dear students there are five there are five intermolecular forces there are five types of intermolecular forces number one is dipole-dipole forces actually this dipole-dipole uh, force exists between the polar molecules so if we are going to uh, discuss example of hydrogen chloride you see this one covalent molecule hydrogen chloride is a polar covalent molecule so this is a formula of hydrogen chloride it is a polar uh, molecule so partial positive is on the hydrogen partial negative Next uh, on the chlorine, so this force of attraction is a covalent force, intramolecular force. It's a covalent. So when many uh, SCL molecules interact with each other, so they interact because of the polarity. So I'm going to write in the uh, broken lines between the hydrogen of other molecule and chlorine of other molecule. So this, this force of attraction is called intermolecular force and we call it dipole dipole force. This is a dipole, two, two poles, partial positive and partial negative, two poles of one SCM and two poles of other SCM. This is a one pole of the SCM and this other pole of SCM. Now this molecule, partial negative charge, attract with the uh, partial positive of other uh, hydrogen chloride molecule due to its polarity due to this this is not a, a covalent bond this is not an intramolecular force this is an intermolecular force and i told you the thermodynamic properties of the all liquids depend upon this intermolecular force how much it is strong and this depend upon the difference of the electronegative field so hydrogen and chloride actually it's a gas state, but it's polar in nature. So partial negative of this chlorine and partial positive of this hydrogen of two molecules, they interact with each other to the difference of their electronegativities. So polarity is created and this type of the force is called uh, dipole-dipole force. So uh, this is the dipole-dipole force already I told you. Attractive forces between the positive end of one molecule with the negative end of other molecule as I explained. It's called dipole-dipole force. This means dipole-dipole interactions are electrostatic interaction between, between this is a permanent dipole, covalent bond, polar covalent bond. This is a permanent dipole which we call a, a co covalent bond, polar covalent bond. This is a uh, between creation, this dipole creation between partial negative and partial positive. So when temperature is going to be increased, this force is going to be finished. So example, polar molecules, hydrogen chloride, and also between the uh, chloroform, this is a carbon, this is a chlorine, Chloroform is a trichlorobethane and this is a partial negative charge. Partial positive. This is the dipole dipole force. These are the permanent, this dipole is permanent, covalent bonds. You can see the dipole dipole force square between the partial negative charge of chlorine and partial positive charge of hydrogen of two molecules of the uh, chloroform. So, this type, this uh, force of attractions are called dipole dipole forces, and I already 
uh, we discussed in the uh, point number six properties of the uh, liquids that is stronger than the molecular forces, the thermodynamic properties are going to be uh, high, just like melting point, boiling point, uh, surface tension, viscosity, heat of vaporization, all they depend upon the nature of the intermolecular forces. So this is the one. Uh, there is the number two in your book, uh, London dispersion forces. So there are five. Uh, first, I have to uh, explain according to book. Then I will uh, tell you about the other one also. So what these are called? London dispersion forces. London dispersion forces. We also call them short, short lived, short lived forces. Short lived forces. These are they have a short life. Uh, dear students, uh, these. London dispersion forces, short lived forces, they are present between the non polar molecules and non polar atoms. When I say non polar molecules between hydrogen and hydrogen, between chlorine and chlorine, between oxygen and oxygen molecule, between nitrogen and nitrogen molecule, these are the non-polar molecules. And these forces are separated between the inert gases. Inert gases means uh, helium, neon, argon. So these forces are going to be formed here in non-polar molecules. So you know the uh, non-ideal behavior of the gases. Gases can be liquefied. Liquefied means you are creating a force of attraction between the gas molecules. These forces are artificial, temporary, because you are applying force. At high pressure, gases are liquefied. It means artificially you are going to compress the gas molecule so these force of attraction are going to be operate and the gas can be liquefied. The same case is also here. These forces are uh, only exist when you are going to give a high pressure and the gases can be liquefied. These gases can be liquefied and solidified under appropriate conditions already we done non ideal here of the gases. Some forces must be holding these molecules in contact with one and other. That's why gas can be liquid state and solid state. It means that these forces are uh, not a permanent uh, but a short lived forces for the time being these forces are going to be created. Helium, very uh, lighter gas and it's also inert gas. So uh, electron charge and steam eventually distributed because helium helium atoms are same. They are spher spherical in region. However, at any given instant, any instant, the actual location of two electrons relative to nucleus can produce instantaneous dipole. Uh, we call them instantaneous. Instantaneous dipole forces, just like uh, this is a helium atom, which is a spherical in shape. Uh, here is a no force, no force of attraction. So when you are going to uh, apply the uh, force of attraction, 
that the uh, shape is going to deform. There, there's a deformation of the shape, and a positive charge and the uh, negative charge is, is going to be uh, created here. There is a partial positive charge and there is a partial negative charge created. So this, uh, by applying the pressure, when the dipole is going to be created on the one uh, atom of the nuclear, then this is going to be uh, hit, transfer, induce dipole to other molecule. This is the medium actually atom, spherical shape, no force of attraction. When you compress, so there is a creation of partial positive due to electron cloud. So now this is the induced dipole. We call induced dipole. Then this dipole is going to be transfer to other. It is going to transfer to other. So all molecules will be polar because of transference of, of dipole to uh, other um, uh, atoms of the helium. That's why uh, when the unpolarized, unpolarized molecule is going to be polarized by uh, uh, giving the pressure, instantaneous dipole is created and this will be induced other molecules then this is going to be transferred and the whole is going to be polar now but this is a short temporary when you release the pressure these force of attractions are going to be vanished out the force of attraction between instantaneous dipole and induced dipole so this is an instantaneous dipole after again the pressure and this is an induced dipole between in instantaneous dipole and induced dipole. When this is a helium, there is no polarity here. When you are going to increase the pressure, the polarity is created. This is called instantaneous dipole. And this instantaneous dipole is going to be uh, transferred, induced other molecule, and it is going to be transferred to all uh, points of the uh, atom of the helium. So it is going to be polar, but this polarity is uh, uh, not a permanent one and it is going to be temporary when you release the pressure, this uh, will be changed into the uh, gaseous state. The force of attraction between an instantaneous dipole and induced dipole is known as a uh, dispersion forces. Uh, we call London dispersion forces because scientists fits London. Fritz Lutter in 1928, he uh, explained these forces, that's why uh, the name is London Dispersion Forces or uh, we call instantaneous uh, dipole forces. Instantaneous dipole forces because uh, non-polar uh, hydrogen or helium change into the polar one uh, instantly by applying the force then this is going to be transferred and induced from one atom to other then polarity is going to be created. This is especially present in the non-molecule, non-polar molecules, hydrogen gas, oxygen gas, chlorine gas, nitrogen gas, among the also uh, inert gases. So dear students, you can see this one. You can, if you see uh, the boiling point, melting point of group number seven, halogens, so, so we can uh, get a result that yes, there are a force of attraction between them. Suppose fluorine is a gas, first remember, fluorine is a gas but bromine liquid. It means there are force of attraction, iodine solid. As we go down the group, the shielding effect is going to be increased, number of shells are going to be increased, the volume of uh, gas is going to be increased size of the atoms will be increased, they affect. Same case if you see in the boiling points of the uh, inert gases, also you can uh, get the result that from the helium to proton and xenon, the boiling point is going to increase. It means that there are a uh, force of attraction between them due to the uh, size of atom is going to be increased. 
uh, students, uh, there is a one dipole dipole forces I am holding, uh, dipole induced dipole forces. This is a, uh, we done two only here dipole dipole forces and also instantaneous dipole dipole forces are we call London dispersion forces. Instantaneous dipole forces or London dispersion forces, these are short lived forces. There are so one you done in the I think maybe in the grade 9, uh, I am dipole force. Just I'm going to explain this one. It's not anything here, but you can see this maybe in the solutions. Maybe in the solutions. I am dipole forces. When you are going to dissolve sugar chloride in water, so you dissociate in positive ions and negative ions. Ionization taking place and dissolution taking place, you can't see sodium ions and chloride ions in the water because this sodium ion is going to be attacked by this one. Like this. These water molecules are surrounded towards the sodium ion. This is the ion dipole force. Positive ion of sodium and negative for the oxygen of water, and they are surrounding. So this is the ion dipole force. Same case for the uh, chloride ions. So this is the water, the shape will be changed, positive of hydrogen is attracted towards negative. So this is the ionic dipole forces. That's why uh, the salts are going to be ionized and how water molecules are going to be surrounded, this is called hydration, surrounded towards the positive ions and negative ions. The students we finish up to here, in the next lecture I will explain the more for the uh, intermolecular forces and there also. Uh, applications. Thank you very much.